memory sticks. We're from the Squad Idea Company. I've got some memory sticks for you guys. We've got a couple other gifts. But lucky you early. By the end of the day, they're all gone. Who wants a memory stick? Who else? Yeah. Uh, 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 content is on here. Take a seat here. Eden. There's a couple more here. Who else wants a memory stick? Hold your hand up, Eden. I'll find you. She'll get your memory stick. Go. My content is on there. From uh, Smart Idea Company, Excellent and Think Brain. <laughs> Everybody got? Yeah, it's free. Very I'll go grab some, some more. Yeah, yeah. How many more do you need? Quite a few right yeah. now. Yeah. Cool. Are we going to go eat it? Yes, we are. Down the front here. Only one each. Yeah. Not more than one. Thank you. 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 On my way. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Pleasure. I'll go grab one up for you. Sure. Welcome. Welcome to USB 364. There we go. Good morning. Welcome. We're going to have quite an entertaining show here this morning. There we go. It's not going to be one of the boring ones. I've got my team here, Tando and Rodan. And they're going to they're going to be the phenomenally uh, engaging speaker. What are we looking for? No, we just need to record. Oh, we need to record. Thank you. Okay. Pleasure. So we have some phenomenally engaging speakers who are completely committed to education. Um, we are, I'm from the Smart Idea Company, and the Smart Idea Company is about more than gadgets. So we are, our, our stand is over there. You'll see the small stand there behind you. A very small stand. Our so behind you is Smart Idea Company e-learning interactive. Please join us over there for some more information. Uh, Tando and Ronan and myself will be there along with my team. So the Smart Idea Company is not about gadgets, as, as, as Tando always tells me. It's not about the gadgets. It's about the outcomes. And the Smart Idea Company is about finding outcomes that are suitable for education. The only way to do that is to find, in my mind, South African platforms, South African made platforms that are made in South Africa, that are then delivered in South Africa, um, and I have my little rocket scientist here, as I call him. You'll find out why, because he's a rocket scientist. Mm. Tando, he's been working in education for how many years, Tando? A long time. He has his doctorate in education and e-learning, so he's highly skilled and, and, and so inspirational for me. Um, yes, we as a smart idea company, we bring all of this together and we put it onto a smart board, we put it onto tablets, we put it onto PCs, we create labs. Um, so we are the people that that roll out the content and roll out what is required for your classrooms. But these are the people that actually create the smart ideas. And uh, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm very, so, so, so thrilled to have them both here today to, to join me. They've been here on the show. Yesterday was incredible. Today, we're looking forward to an even better show. Um, and you'll soon find out why these guys are so adorable. Um, I'm going to hand over, with no further ado, to Roland and Tando. Thanks, guys. Thanks very much, Steve. You pay us too many compliments. I'll tell you what, do you want to take this one first? Yeah, how are you guys? Fine. Fine. Great stuff, man. Our MDS just became uh, Father Christmas for the day and gave everyone free gifts. Uh, we're going to try and just uh, give uh, justification for this time. Uh, my name is Tando and I'm head of education. And today I just want to basically engage you on what are the reasons why we're all engaging here? Can anyone maybe offer an answer? Why are we here and what do you want to achieve? What do you want to see happening? And what do you want to, as an outcome, what do we want to see today? Madam? What do you want to benefit out of this presentation? Well, I'm here to learn, firstly, um, to see how I can incorporate what you guys have to offer into Business that I'm trying to run out. Great stuff. You want that. So you're looking for business synergies. Great stuff. So as the Smart Idea Group, the most important thing that you need to know is we are mainly 
We are mainly all about smart ideas. And the empowerment of the ecosystem in education for us is very important. And we are looking for partners and innovators to partner up with. So for, for my side of things, it's really just to do a few, few things uh, right. And talk about, firstly, what is e-lessons? Why are we talking about e-lessons? Why are we talking about assessments and exercises? We've developed a platform that talks to e-lessons and delivery of content. And most of the research that we've done taught us that there are four most important elements of e-learning that we need to look at. And one of them is e-content. We are moving into a totally different stratosphere in terms of development. And the content that is going to basically be enticing for the teachers and the learners needs to be aligned to where we are going right now. So in terms of lesson planning for teachers, instructional content as well as content delivery, things are changing. The question is what are we doing? Because pedagogy in terms of methodologies is changing with times. Do you agree? True, true. Yeah. Secondly, we now have what we call adaptive software that allows for proper assessment. Because one of the days where you sit in the class and you need to go home and you, you draft an assessment, you come back, you print it out at the printing room, you go and deliver it in the class, and you hope that the learners will pass. The idea now is how do we make sure we've got the right software and the tools that will give us adaptive assessments. Now, what is adaptive uh, assessments? It's mainly a blend between summative and formative assessments because our learners are actually growing in terms of their understanding. They are living in virtual spaces. So the idea is we need to eventually create solutions that are aligned to that and talk to how we create recommendation engines that says we've now identified challenges and here are the gaps and as teachers in the schooling system, including the parents, um, if you come to us then, you will understand why the parents are very critical in the whole, in the whole ecosystem at the same time. Because for you to create meaningful interventions, you need to know what you're dealing with. And then comes what we call remedial content. This is supplementary support. This is where my brother there comes in and he's got a very wonderful system that I would like him to talk about right now. All right, my business is Think Brainwave. Can you guys hear me clearly there? Okay, so. All right, at Think Brainwave, we produce content provided by tutors. Tutors go and create videos, and these videos are all syllabus aligned. It's actually a user-based content structure so that we can continually grow, and we have users actually analyzing content by giving it likes or dislikes. So if something's good and they think it's, it's going to add value to their lives, they like it. If they dislike it, it doesn't get shared further on the system. It's very much like a social media platform. The algorithm runs the same. I think let's uh, jump to the next slide. Right now we are sitting in this bracket over here where we have bridge technologies from 2010 to 2020. We are, we moved from, 20, uh, from 1900 up to 2010, where we were sitting in an industrial revolution education structure. You had classes that were filled to the brim, 30 people to 40 people in a class, and they're being educated according to a basic structure. There was no individual learning that was taking place. Now, let me ask you, sir, if you were to have somebody that gives you personal learning, something that's adapting to what your certain need is, would that be more effective or less effective? It would indeed, right? I mean, would anyone disagree with that or would everyone actually agree? Because that's what we're looking to do. We're sitting here in this position and we're talking small class learning. And I think we just saw this. So small class learning is where you're sitting with 15 to 20 people in a class. Ideally, a teacher should have about six students per teacher. Now we're currently sitting with 25 to 30. I'm looking at people nodding their heads. Are you a teacher? Yeah. Know, am I not correct? You see, six people's ideal because you can do projects together. Six people can work in a group as a project or they can work individually. Now, that's a lot easier to handle than 30 kids in a class. So what we're looking to do, or what we're currently implementing, is small class learning structures where you have your normal 30 people in a class, but then let's add extra teachers into the classroom as support. Now in Finland, the number one leading education system in the world 
they have up to four to even five teachers in a class to provide support for the teacher themselves. Right. So we're currently using cloud systems, big data and analytics. Anybody know what big data and analytics is? Do you know over there? Let's have a shot. Tell us what it is. If you if you got it. Okay, so big data. We try and collect as much data points as possible. We then develop artificial intelligence and we do analytics with that. Now Tundle's system actually touches on that. Let's finish this point and then I think you need to talk about the analysis. So our fourth industrial revolution is a buzzword at the moment. Everyone's discussing fourth industrial revolution, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I'm seeing fourth and I'm seeing industrial revolution. Surely we're kind of talking about the same thing. What is the fourth industrial revolution? Well, I'll tell you. We talk about virtual learning. VR learning like you can see over there, classrooms from your home with a headset. Now if you look at countries that are highly packed like India and Asia, just general Asia, you don't have school fields like we have in South Africa. You've got limited space and overpopulation. So we need to start looking at things like virtual learning to create an impact for our students. Now we look at artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is not scary, it's actually quite helpful. We use a lot of data, big data up there, and we analyze it to give us benefits. We obviously, from Minister of Education, we need to focus on robotics. We look at massive IoT, and currently we sit with 5G towards 9G, moving forward from 2020 to 2040. Lastly, we have got the atomic revolution. We don't actually know what's coming, but we propose that these are the factors that are coming. Now, as Steve said, the rocket scientists over here, this is my assumption. We've got atomic reorganization. For instance, we take atoms out of the air and we break them down into their composite parts and create things like gold. Hopefully you can do that. Currently it's not available because it costs too much energy. We talk about RFIDs, chips so that you don't have to carry your credit card around and other things that are inconvenient. You've got a global basic wage. So when we talk about AI, we're kind of scared because we think AI is taking all of our jobs. The big power is actually looking at implementing a global basic wage so that everybody gets paid and then they can enjoy life as if they were on a basic income bracket, if one can say. Okay? You've got Singularity, where we can transfer our consciousness into a computer. You must have watched a couple of movies like Her, there's a movie that, you know, you can communicate personally with your, your operating system. And then we're looking at probably 10G. We're going to hand over to Tando now, take it from here. Thank you very much, Mr. Rocket Scientist. I think that everyone agrees that the biggest challenge right now we have, especially for teachers, yes, ma'am, is we need to be able to say, how do we get ready for the next frontier? How do we not only understand the bridge technologies, the fourth industrial revolution and where we're going, but how do we actually get ready and make sure that we are able to embrace that? And that talks to teacher development and training that is aligned to atomic revolution. And that's why we come in as an organization where we bring about all the four elements of blended learning together and we want to make sure that right now we engage partners in different spaces where we create analytics and virtual platforms because everyone lives in a virtual platform i think all of you live in a virtual platform anyone that doesn't live in a virtual platform right either you're on facebook whatsapp twitter etc but there's a meaning to that in the, in the space of education now imagine a situation where teachers and learners can actually be sitting in a virtual space and be able to learn without having to go to Google and going to um, um, YouTube, etc. So those are the kind of platforms we actually want to talk to about. Now we've created a platform called Excellent, right? Why did we do that? We wanted to develop a system by teachers, most importantly for teachers. Because teachers are dealing with loads of variables. You teach a learner today, the question is, how far did they understand, right? Every year we wait in, in anticipate for matching results, and it has become a major in terms of our performance. But how, and what if you can have a, a system that can assist you as a teacher to manage your output on a daily basis, that can assist you to understand what are the weaknesses of each and every child on a daily basis so that you are able to create interventions that are specific to that particular child. 
and you are able to then give out reports to the structures and everyone can then work together as specialists in the education space and deliver proper education. Eventually wanting to achieve equality in terms of everyone having the same opportunity in terms of content but most importantly driving quality education at the same time. So we are bringing about different aspects and I will leave Roland to talk about devices. The devices that are now, we are now always talking about that we are introducing in classes are necessarily dictated by the understanding of the teacher. There are teachers that are still afraid of devices, yes? When do you talk about introducing a laptop in a class, they want to run away. Now, the question is, how do we make sure that we create an ecosystem that is balanced? Roland? Right. I think you actually said this quite well. Teachers need to be trained for this next revolution. If we're going to achieve this, we need to train our teachers to use these devices. So Tando's got a system where he actually trains up teachers that are qualified and teachers that are going to be qualified for upliftment and upskilling in the community. Right, so how are we going to deliver our lessons if they're technological? We need smart boards, we need uh, tablets and computers, laptops. What do we currently have? We've got pens and paper. How are we going to connect to those tablets? Well, if you've got pens and paper, you don't need internet. But you actually need internet if you're going to be using these devices. So what we're thinking is, we're looking at 4K interactive smart boards. We're thinking laptops, computers, and then you need a 4G or 5G going into the future, mobile uh, telecommunication device for Wi-Fi, right? So if we look at our under underprivileged communities, we don't currently have these systems in place. However, we are changing this. Right, so our classroom management. With software like Excellate, you can go through a, an entire syllabus with a set of notes and tests. Teachers no longer need to sit at home and do marking and assessment, and creating assessments. It's all built onto the platform. So if we have personal use items for independent learning, how many... Is this working? Yeah. It's working. Okay. Cool. You turn it down. <laughs> okay. Right. So for independent learning, you will need your own device like an iPad or any sort of smart tablet or a laptop. We need to provide these to our students so that they can learn at home. A lot more learning should be done at school. However, projects need to be done at home in a general basis. You need to have exercises and assessment. And I think I should give this back to you so you can explain a little bit more about the, the situation here. So most of the teachers, the, the most important thing they look at is why do I need a device? I think that's the first question you ask. And one of the things that we want to address is objectively teachers want to develop lessons. They want to talk about content uh, creation, which is lesson preparation. Yeah? They want to make sure that they can manage their classrooms but most importantly, developing independent learners at the same time. Because we need to be able to empower the learners, empower the teachers, but most importantly, develop independent learning. And that's where we should be going, because if the teacher becomes the core every single time, then we are not able to necessarily transfer the information and be able to manage it. So the devices that we talk about as a business are mainly focused on achieving and assisting teachers do their job a bit better. And that is why it goes back to training and development. There is a very big drive in our business in terms of training and development that talks to how do we make sure that teachers, before they go into service, they are actually trained enough in terms of pre-service training and basic ICT readiness. We partner up with certain organizations that will assist us in making sure that we build formidable and comprehensive training for teachers to make sure that they are ready going into the future. We've then embedded within that continuous learning and created content collaboration. What is content co collaboration? Our platforms allow you as teachers to start sharing information, start sharing content, lessons, videos, and you are able to have what we call peer-to-peer -peer coaching at the same time. Now, the most important part of this whole exercise is how do we ensure we empower the teachers and the ecosystem to be ready for the fourth in the sun revolution and eventually get to a space where we start analyzing the results and 
my friend is going to continue talking about letter evaluation. How do we make sure we create a comprehensive structure that allows for letter evaluation using analytics? And he will talk about analytics. All right. All right. So as we as we were discussing earlier, we need AI. All right. But we need to utilize AI for our benefit. When these students jump onto the onto the Excellent platform, they'll be taking tests. Primary to that, they'll be going through a set of notes. Once they understand the notes, they'll take a test, and the results will be, uh, I guess you'd say, saved into a database. The AI will run in the back end, analyzing these results, and then pushing further notes and simpler explanations to the child for a better explanation, right? This, in turn, analyzes each individual weakness, making a more effective learning platform.